let's bring on uh, Mr. EDM himself, Mr. Techno Lee Camp. Hey, man. I love it. I love the music. It's, I didn't know you had the Abu Ghraib tapes. I didn't know. <laughs> You had the leaked torture music. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting ready to join you on the, uh, in the demonetized world. Uh, I've got my first full-on strike against my YouTube channel. Yes. Congratulations, Lee Camp. Copyright strike. Um, and I, no, I, mine was for cyberbullying. Yeah. Tell us who you were cyberbullying. That, that you sent I, me this text and I literally was like, okay. It was a it was a video from like a, I don't know a year ago maybe maybe a little less but I think a year ago She's talking about the connections and some of these were covered in like mainstream outlets but the connections between Bloomberg and Epstein Michael Bloomberg and Epstein and there's like photos of them together and so of course they had connections but uh, yeah that was pulled down and they said it was cyberbullying. So either I'm bullying a, a dead rapist sex trafficker, or I'm apparently bullying a multi-billionaire who's gonna have a real time getting over it, a real tough time getting over this, getting over my accusations. I think, you know, he's gonna be in his yacht, inside his other yacht, crying about what I've said. Can we stop bullying billionaires, Lee? Can we just can it stop? Just stop. <laughs> this billionaire that did stop and frisk and ruin people's lives and hung out with pedophiles and sex traffickers. Can we just stop hurting him? He's a, he's a human being too. No, he's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cyberbullying a billionaire with known ties to one of the most notorious pedophiles the world has ever known. Yeah. I, so I, mean, I, should, have, I should have learned my lesson after <laughs> You, you, you covered the topic and they, uh, they shut you down. So, I mean, yeah, I got a, you know, my demonetization was for well, a lot of things, but I got one, I had a video pulled down for medical misinformation, just reading stories saying it's not other organizations and journalists saying it's not good that Bill Gates won't release the COVID vaccine patent to poor countries. I just repeated yeah, that, that information. Yeah, that that was covered in some mainstream outlets as well. That was like that was not some sort of like you know hidden thing that was out there very clearly. I and I didn't give any medical misinformation. I didn't say, oh, the vaccine doesn't work. I didn't say any crazy. I said, I said the vaccine works, and these poor countries could use it, and he's denying it. And that was the medical misinformation I was supposedly giving, like. Well, clearly the problem is that both of us have uh, said mean things to billionaires. Yes, and it's got to stop, Lee Camp. It does. Bill, Bill Gates is, uh, you know, he's, he's struggling right now. He's having a hard time. Him and Elon Musk, they're having a hard time. Yeah. Um, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Government Secrets, and it's confirmed, episode 47. I'm pretty sure you've said that for the past four weeks. <laughs> episode 47 eventually i'm gonna be right we've been stuck favorite. on 47 <laughs> well, it is a lot to ask both of us to just go back to the previous episode and see what number it was and then add one it's a lot to, it's a lot to do listen i'll re I'll, I'll research the corrupt origins of the fucking drug war till my eyes bleed but i'm not looking up the goddamn episode number all right no. That's Fuck impossible. you. What do you think I am? I have people do that for me. <laughs> and they they don't normally do it for me, so therefore I don't know the number. You can't expect me after pointing through Freedom of Information Act documents to count. <laughs> I mean, that's just not something I can do. Um, so so how, do you, how do you feel this week losing our Lord and Savior, Donald Rumsfeld? Oh, double Dutch Donnie Rumsfeld. Well, I think he's going to find he right now. He's learning what the known unknown really is, isn't he? <laughs> uh, yeah. So this this is our first segment. Is um, I thought in honor of um, war criminal Don Rumsfeld, we could talk about some of the evil shit that he's done. <laughs> some the... Yeah, I mean he's a he's a top tier. He's a, he's an all of famer. 
He is. He's in the Hall he's in the Warmonger Government Secrets Hall of Fame. Yeah. And um, where do you begin? I typed in yesterday because I was like, oh, what, I want to cover. And it's just there's a treasure trove <laughs> of yeah. Rumsfeldian um, lies and cover ups. As the as the uh, New York Times put it, because they basically tried to tried to make him sound like a hero, even though they did mention that the Iraq war was a disaster. But uh, they said he had the distinction of serving as both the youngest defense secretary and then later as the oldest defense secretary when he came back. What a distinction to be a war criminal twice. You know, very few people get to get to have that go around twice as a war criminal. So, Yeah, under two prestigious presidencies of Nixon and George W. Bush. I mean, really? I think, I think it was Ford, but. Oh, who gives a shit? I mean, <laughs> some Warren Commission tool. Who cares? Whatever. I mean, I mean, it was it was a cunt, but it was. We just listen. We got to get them. We got to get them straight here. We can't. Yeah, I just whatever, whatever. Failed parasite warmongering clown that has embarrassed the White House since they killed Kennedy. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> one of those guys. Uh, um, Donald Rumsfeld, former defense secretary and accused war criminal dead at 88. <laughs> what, so, which, which one's that from? That's uh, from Teen Vogue. Teen Vogue, guy, we talked about this before. They actually do some good shit. But the, the best uh, headline from my former employer, The Onion, was weapon of mass destruction found dead at 88. <laughs> God bless the onion. They are doing the <laughs> Lord's work. Um, so 10 months before September 11, which we are coming up on the 20 year anniversary, secretary of defense, Donald Rumsfeld approved an updated version of the U S army secret operational continuity of government plan. This is weird. A draft document published by the whistleblowing website, WikiLeaks entitled army regulation 50 500 dash three emergency Employment of Army and Other Resources, Army continu uh, Continuity of Operations Program, dated January 19, 2001. Spells out changes in Army doctrine. Um, this is a pretty... I don't know. It's a lot of what a lot of people use as a, they consider it a smoking gun in terms of like, was 9-11 planned? I don't know about that, but maybe I, I will. Yeah. They knew something was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I go with the uh, they, they knew something was happening kind of uh, theory on it. A few things about this. One is I think they, what they said, uh, 10 months before, nine months before, meaning basically he approved this when they got into office, when he and right. Bush took office, uh, which is not cool, but it's also, it's not like it was done a week before 9-11. Like, it, I, I don't know. It sounds to me like he was looking to alter the way the Pentagon worked. Uh, this is not denying he's a fuck face, but uh, like he was doing that. And then the other thing that people, uh, this is the funniest one that I find when people point to the fact that he gave a speech on 9-10 the day before 9-11 to the Pentagon, like had like a all, all hands on deck meeting and basically said, and there's a quote actually of the sentence of him saying, we're or I'm at war with the Pentagon. And his point was basically he's at war with the bureaucracy and the, uh, you know, the unaccountable uh, waste and stuff. Uh, and he gave a speech about it. And so people go, Rumsfeld said he was at war with the Pentagon the day before they bombed the Pentagon or the jet hit the Pentagon or whatever. And it's like, okay, first of all, do you think he'd really, if he knew that was going to happen, give a speech the day before being like, hey, just to let you know, I'm about to blast a hole in the Pentagon. Uh, it, it actually, to me, it proves the opposite that they might have known something was going down, but I don't think he knew what the following day was going to hold if he's given a speech saying, I'm at war with the Pentagon. Yeah, I, I, I subscribe to the theory that it was kind of like the theories of FDR and, and Pearl Harbor. They had a, they thought something was coming. They didn't know what, and they went, well, let's just kind of let it happen. Because if we let it happen, we don't really go like, really try to stop it. 
Right. Then, and, per and Pearl Harbor, there's a, a fair amount of evidence that he, or, or maybe overwhelming out of evidence that they knew basically the attack was coming on Pearl Harbor. Uh, and I don't know if they knew how many people were going to die, things like that, but uh, they knew they knew it was coming and they, I think, found it useful, you know, to get into the war. Well, yeah, Americans didn't want to get into another war at that point. And, and FDR knew that this happened. Americans would be like, we were attacked. We have to do this. That's why, you know, it's, there's also this like wacky coincidence of Pearl Harbor where he pulled a lot of the commanding officers out of Pearl Harbor. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think he, and, and I think this is, look, there was, I forget the name of it, but there was a, either a, a survey or a, that said that we need to have a, you know, the year prior or year of earlier in the year in 2001, we need to have a Pearl Harbor style event to justify military spending. Cause let's not forget the, um, the peak of cold of, of military global military spending was 1980, like the peak of the cold war. The lowest it got was the year 2000. And yeah, so the, the fall of the Soviet union, basically there was no grand power that the United States needed to be waging war with anymore, even a cold war. And so they actually did decrease military spending to some degree for a bit. Yeah. And then there was no, yeah, there was no need to stockpile, uh, you know, the war at, at all the bases all over the world that America had, there wasn't a need for any of that. And then, Oh gee, nine 11 happens and here we go. And so that's the thing about this, um, you know, that is they knew like, does this, is this a smoking gun? Like the minute they got an office, they said, we're going to plan nine 11. No, I don't believe that. But they said, we gotta, we gotta let something happen. You know, we need to find yeah, something. Yeah. We, we need to, I think they were well aware of these guys were planning something and they, they might not, I, I don't think they knew the day. I don't think they knew the severity uh, but they had all the plans of what to do immediately afterwards. That was when, and this is kind of one of the most famous things about Rumsfeld, even though his name is not always brought up when people mention it, is when Wesley Clark, General Wesley Clark, said he went into the Pentagon right after 9-11, and he was talking to higher-ups, but not Rumsfeld, and he said, hey, just between you and me, we're going to invade five, uh, seven countries in five years. And he said, what are you talking about? It didn't, this didn't come from seven countries. And they said, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We're going to war with Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and, uh, you know, several others, uh, Syria, I believe. And, and it all basically happened. It didn't all happen in five years, but it all basically happened because they had these plans drawn up. And like you're saying, they needed something to happen to precipitate to some degree, uh, their invasion of a variety of countries. Um, and, and that being said, I, I just, uh, we, we don't have to get off on nine 11 for a, an hour, but, uh, one other thing is I have covered that there are a fuckload of questions about building seven. I will, yes. I will grant people that, uh, the, I think it was a university of Alaska or a university in Alaska did like a, you know, long-term computer model analysis and it can't come up with the way that building came down. Like it, it makes no sense that a fire that burns, but you can't see it from the outside for, you know, whatever they, whatever it was, 12 hours, 10 hours or something suddenly causes instantaneous collapse of a building. It doesn't make any sense. So something fucking happened. Yeah. And, and, and what this all points to getting back to, uh, this COG COG was, um, this is, let me go back to this. The Bush administration put the COG plans into operation for the first time in U.S. history in the hours directly following the September 11th terrorist attacks, and they have never been rescinded. So that's the thing, too, about the Patriot Act and all that stuff. Oh, and they yeah. kept saying, oh, this is temporary. It's just to fight the war on terror. We've been in... We've been, you know, doing this for 20 years. They just announced today that they're pulling troops out of the Bagram Afghanistan base. And which honestly brought tears to my eyes because I've been to that base three different times. And there's the, there's a performer. Maybe you're going to miss it? Tears because you're going to miss it? I don't know. It just brought, I mean, it literally like, 
it just brought up all the emotion of going over there, I think. And there's yeah. this tent that all the performers stayed in and all of our headshots were all up there. And, and there's the Pat Tillman center. I was in Afghanistan in 06 when, um, John McCain reopened up the investigation and the investigators were on our flight from, um, Frankfurt into, uh, Kyrgyzstan and then into Bagram. And I remember talking to them like they were going to reopen the investigation, but because the family pressured John McCain. And I was like standing in the middle of all this history. And then, the, and then when I went back there in 07, they built the, you know, the Pat Tillman center and uh, at Bagram. Yeah, we, we, we honestly could do an episode on the Pat Tillman bullshit and yeah, we, the amount that they used his death from friendly fire for propaganda purposes. Yeah. And his, how his family was like infuriated at it, you know? And, um, so it's really like all this stuff is very much tied together because they all knew something was going to happen and they knew they needed to get in there. And, you know, it's, it's, and this is another thing that's in the WikiLeaks since the late 1980s Rumsfeld, um, was a, what is this crazy word? Um, habit two of COG exercises along with vice president Dick Cheney. Indeed, COG drills have been organized by right wing center for strategic and international studies and in investigative journalist, Andrew Cochran revealed in his definitive political biography of the former defense secretary, the highly secret program was known as project 908 and among the individuals earmarked to take power when disaster struck was Donald Rumsfeld there for several days. He would be immured in artificial caverns, staring at electric displays, streaming data of disaster and confusion, sleeping on cots, and subsisting of the most austere rations. Uh, insofar as the COG games gave the illusion of reality, they taught Rumsfeld and his fellow players some dangerous lessons, particularly when the fall of the Soviet Union induced some changes in the usual scenarios, although the exercises continued, still budgeted over $200 million in the Clinton area. The vanished Soviets were now customarily replaced by terrorists. The terrorism in, envisioned, however, was almost always state-sponsored. Wow, haven't we heard that? state The Iran-backed militias have bombed a thing, and that's why Joe Biden had to bomb a thing. So um, this really, to me, what this, what this shows is how Rumsfeld, I mean, that's what happened when Bush got to office. He just dug up all these old Nixon and Reagan, like evil dinosaurs, like Dick Cheney and Rumsfeld, who had literally been planning this in one form or another. Yeah. Again, they weren't like planning 9-11, but like, we just need some big event so we can seize more power and make more money off a of war. I mean, Dick yeah, Cheney was the guy that privatized everything. And Bush, people know Bush was essentially a puppet. I mean, it was, it was Cheney and Rumsfeld and a few others that were really controlling things. And Bush was the one that they'd trot out and he'd try and sound all folksy and oh, I'm just a guy you want to have a beer with. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, uh, fucking Dick Cheney's cackling like the penguin in the Batman movies. So it's it, it, it's like it, most people know that, and it was Rumsfeld. I mean, and and my I, I'm sorry that you know when when uh, he first died a few days ago, uh, I had all the anger, and now some of it subsided. So I got to remind myself, uh, fuck that guy. He's a yeah. fucking war criminal, and our mainstream media isn't doesn't talk about him as if he's a war criminal. You know, you you put up a Teen Vogue because weirdly that's where you got to go now for some real shit. Uh, it's it's hilarious, and and you know the New York Times article which I I uh, did a video about they that came out like an hour afterwards. They they acted like oh it was you know you you add some nuance in there about how Iraq didn't go well and it hurt his career and stuff. But in general. Most of the words used were positive words like distinction. Also, they tried to remind everybody that this was a new era, uh, uh, era of, uh, of terror and stuff where, where the people were looking for security and, and you know, th they didn't use these next terms, but Daddy Rumsfeld was there to take care of America. And I mean, it's just, it's amazing to watch our mainstream media fawn over these powerful fucking serial murderers. Serial murderers. And what did the Washington Post call Mike Gravel when he died last week? Gadfly. Gadfly. Which, 
a definition of a gadfly is like a fly that gets in the way and annoys things and like, you know, gets in your food or whatever. They're like, so that's the guy that wants to end war and called out the crazy war machine and called out the psycho war criminals in the Democratic Party during the 2008 debates where he goes, you people frighten me, referring to Biden, Obama, and Hillary Clinton. He's called a gadfly, but Donald Rumsfeld, who's a fucking war criminal, is like, distinction buried to laid to rest at Arlington. Fuck that guy. They should kick his rotten ass body in a goddamn river somewhere and just let maggots eat him. Or gadflies eat him. Or gadflies. Uh, I think gadflies would be very appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Like, when, uh, when when Mike Ravel uh, gad like it's the 1950s, and they're like, "Oh, why that? Why that so and so? That gadfly? I can't believe he came in here and interrupted our discussions on how many brown people we're going to kill today. That annoying gadfly." Gadfly. Yeah, that's a term that's commonly used a lot. You hear gadfly a lot. Um, that uh, freaking hooligan. <laughs> with, the, with his hibbity jibbers always oh, interrupting our meetings while we're pissing into baby skulls <laughs> pissing into baby skulls um which is the name of my new comedy album <laughs> um uh so yeah that's i mean we could go you wanted to sell merch there's the slogan right there <laughs> well we are going to be doing uh we could go on for literally we could do 15 episodes just on donald rumsfeld lies um so you know i think that's good for this before well, we get he, into and not not that i'm gonna fucking pedestal robert mcnamara who was defense secretary and donald rumsfeld worked under him but mcnamara was defense secretary during vietnam but mcnamara at least in the fog of war and some other yeah. places had some little itty bitty inch of remorse where he was like, "Yeah, it turns out we were wrong, and it turned out we didn't understand." Oh yeah, you've 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 talked about this before, where they it seemed like they didn't really understand the country so much. But but with with uh, Rumsfeld, never once did he at any fucking moment say that. Oh, maybe a million Iraqis died because of his stupid lies and it has come out that between dick cheney and him those were the two offices that were like telling the cia which is not known for being friendly and nice they were telling them that that you know oh we found connections between saddam hussein and al, and al qaeda and the cia is going we don't actually see that and they were like yeah yeah you do look a little harder you'll find it it's no, they have no remorse at all. And they will never admit fault. They are sociopaths to their core. Um, just like all of them, just like Hillary's the Clinton, she's never going to admit fault unless they, the only reason the Clintons admit, ever admit fault on something is if they think it's a good strategic move. That's the only time they'll, right. they'll admit right. fault is like, right. Oh, I, we should probably, we might lose some of the black votes. So I'm going to come forward and say, Oh, the 94 crime bill was, it was, was a mistake at the time right. and give some sort of like, golly gee, we didn't know, you know, we didn't, we didn't read the, all the instructions on the box when we got the equipment, you know, like shut the fuck up. Or like, or like, or like Bill Clinton saying, yes, I did indeed have sexual relations with that woman. Yeah. It's, um, so I, yeah. And, and, and yeah, you're right. McNamara at least said, man, that's why that movie is called The Fog of Wars. He was just like, we were trying, we made mistakes. I mean, and, Although, and he, it's easy to argue that that is another level of bullshit just to get out of the like, oh, we sure. knew what we were doing. We just wanted to massacre civilians to, to quote unquote, stop the Red Menace. Right. And yeah, and, and I mean, he has an ounce of credibility <laughs> in that he was JFK's defense secretary during the Cuban missile crisis and like saw Kennedy trying to like negotiate without the use of force and the CIA and the generals all wanted, they all wanted Kennedy to invade Cuba and go nuts. And Kennedy kept saying, no. So like McNamara at least just has, like you say, just this, just a shred of. Yeah. But wasn't McNamara probably the one pushing him to fucking bomb. Probably, Cuba. probably was <laughs> um, another one of these Ivy league psychos. Um, that helped ramp up the war in um, in Vietnam, which is why 
I don't really trust people that have Ivy League degrees. I'll be real, real clear with you. I just, anytime somebody, and, and when I see them like in Hollywood, oh, this, he was in Harvard. He's a smart comedian. No, he's not. He's never, if I'd never hire him because this fucking silver spoon ass will always get a job somewhere. I will never and hire him. You can not get into writing. Uh, I don't know if it's specifically comedy, but the, the comedy writing world in, I mean, maybe it's opened up a little the past like 10 years, but it's like just, all Harvard and Yale oh. and Stanford and shit like right. Never hire them. Ever. Never. Never hire them. I will never hire them. I will never hire somebody with an Ivy League degree ever. Unless they like grew up in poverty and had to like work 15 jobs to pay for that degree, then maybe I'd be like, okay, I'll give you a credit. But anyone else, parents paid for it. Fuck you. Nothing. You get nothing from me. Um I'm only gonna hire them if I if we get to haze them first. Yeah, like a, like a spanking machine, you know that stuff. Yeah, I do that if they get in a spanking <laughs> machine and make them crawl through Jello or whatever the thing we're gonna make them do. You know what I mean? Tie a rope to their nuts or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually something very homoerotic while while yelling that you hate queers. You know, oh, you're a queer. I'm gonna stick my nuts in your mouth because you're a queer. Look at me, look at me, because you, you, you're gay, which is stupid, so I'm going to put my nuts in your mouth. I know. I, that's why I never joined a fraternity. I'm like, well, I don't know that I, you know, I'm not gay, and uh, if I was gay, I wouldn't be all repressed and angry about it and join a fraternity. I'd just be gay and go <laughs> be a gay guy and have fun being a gay guy rather than like, I'm not gay. You know what I mean? Like... Why you, you know, make some guy blow you and be like, you like this, you weirdo. Like, I wouldn't do that. I would just, I would just be gay and be like, oh, I like dudes. I'm going to hang out with dudes. Like, that's what I would do. I wouldn't have to like. That's why they're always like, man, me, me and my guys from my frat. Those were the years. I just, those were my best buddies. Well, yeah, because you blew each other. That's, yeah, that, you guys, really, that really keeps, it keeps guys close. It does. <laughs> Yeah. And then you guys all married, you know, women and moved in the suburbs and then, you know, blue dudes at your golf club and there were gym or whatever. Like I've known so many gay guys that said they hooked up with married men, like suburban married guys. I, I was like, what? They're like, oh, Graham. <laughs> all the time. I was like, no way. I was like, this friend of mine who was gay is a comic. He'd tell me that he goes, Graham, I would hook up with these guys all the time. Are you kidding me? He goes, yeah, they're all. I was like, and a lot of them used to be in fraternities and stuff. I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Um, so like another reason to just admit you're gay, we wouldn't need fraternities or hazing or Mike Pence, Mike Pence. If he just admitted he was gay, he wouldn't be so repressed. That's true. That's weird true. evangelical bullshit. Yeah. He wouldn't, um, need to, he wouldn't need to do the, the, the glory hole thing just to get hard. Yeah. It's true. That's why they call it a glory hole. It's mainly heavily religious people that are there. Glory be to God. Yeah, there you go. Jam it in there, friend. Jesus is on the other end. <laughs> Jesus is on the other. Just picture Jesus on the other side. That's he came he came back to earth and it's it's he's had a rough go at it. It was the only job he could find. You know, employment is it's tough to find good employment these days. So. I there's not a lot of carpentry happening, you know what I mean? Like uh <laughs> Well, he he cuts the holes in the walls, so they, they got some, he got paid extra for that, you know. I mean, vineyards are you know, turning water into wine, isn't that big of a deal now? Because it's like everyone's got a vineyard, so it's really it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> everyone's drinking those hard seltzers, wine's not that big. Um, so anyway, yeah, Rumsfeld, I'm glad he's dead, he can go fuck himself. So that's where we're at with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the secret. <laughs> that was the secret. Rumsfeld is uh, right now in a lake of fire. Sucking Hitler's dick for eternity. Good luck, Hellfire. Um, so, uh, next government secret segue. Beep, beep, beep. Pew, 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 pew. Um, what do you got on tap for us, Lee Camp? Yeah, let's do it. So, first of all, we got an update. Is there a is there a noises for an update? Government secret update. Beep, 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 beep. It's a new sound effect. I just spent a lot of money on. It, it got very sad trombone there at the end. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so last week we talked about the Kent State massacre that mm -hmm. happened. Uh, you know, four people killed by 
National Guardsmen, four unarmed students in a group of unarmed students were killed and many more shot uh, by National Guardsmen in 1970. Um, and so I got an email from Laurel Krauss. And I'm gonna read you a little bit of it. Uh, Laurel Krauss has, has done a lot of work to raise attention to uh, to what happened that day, what really happened that day, as opposed to the kind of bullshit propaganda that the media has fed us, which is also what we talked about last week. Uh, she said, my sister Allison was one of the four killed on May 4th, 1970 at Kent State. She was protesting the Vietnam War, the invasion in Cambodia, and the occupation of her college campus. It was noontime on campus, and the campus was open at the moment of the massacre. And, and here's kind of the update. She, she goes on to detail some of what happened uh, that day. Uh, much of it we covered last week, but uh, this, this part we did not. She said, in 2010, I formed the Kent State Truth Tribunal and began working with Project Censored on the 51st anniversary, which was this year, a couple of months ago. New documents emerged around COINTELPRO bringing in strangers to Kent State for the massacre. Even more interesting, Ohio Northern University interviewed 12 original Kent State Ohio National Guardsmen present that day. This amazing study answered key questions we had had about what was going on in their heads because they hadn't spoken for all these years. Uh, and after listening to all 12 interviews, we learned it was ugly propaganda, meaning they had been fed uh, ridiculous and ugly propaganda before heading out to this campus with live ammunition. Uh, she goes on, there was one guardsman that stood out, J. Ronald Snyder, AKA James Snyder. He stands out because he still works as a security guard at Kent State. Most likely this is his reward for the dirty tricks he performed for the COINTELPRO project at Kent State. This was also the same guardsman we mentioned last week who lied initially afterwards and said he found a gun and brass knuckles on one of the dead students and he later admitted that he had just flat out made that up. There was no gun, uh, there were no brass knuckles on the dead student. Um, and, and he apparently, you know, you'd think these people massacre Kent State students, maybe they wouldn't then get a job there. Maybe they wouldn't be offered to work there. But wow. apparently he is uh, still there, which is really repulsive. Um, and if people want more from uh, more information and, and uh, about what happened and everything else that's been brought, that's, that's come to light over the past few years, uh, the website is truthtribunal.org uh, that Laurel Krauss has helped create. So truthtribunal.org. Hey, Kate, can you put that up? And I'll uh, put that up on the screen, truthtribunal.org. Um, yeah, I mean, this sounds very, I mean, this is sort of typically how they operate. Like it's, it's, I mean, on a much larger scale, obviously, we talked about the JFK assassination, how um, Lee Harvey Oswald openly said, you know, I'm defecting. I hate America. I'm going to join the Soviet Union. I'm going to go to Russia. He goes to Russia, comes back. Oh, and then he just gets a passport. Allowed, yeah, just allowed to come back, get a passport. No. Nobody investigates him. Not arrested. He's not even questioned. Like, oh, that's weird. So this it's guy lies. Like, it's almost like they were setting him up for something. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that would be, Lee Camp. Now it sounds like you're you're being a little bit of a gadfly there, you <laughs> flibberty gibbet. Um, and yeah, and, and then this guy, of course, still works there. God, is that an insult to the people that were killed? Like, what Dude, a slap in the face! What a fuck you! I mean, seriously, it's uh, uh, unreal. And again, it's the same old pattern of. Those that are in power are just evi evil. And they're, they're, here's the thing about those in power. They're scared little punks. They're always afraid they're going to lose their power. So they got to do everything they got to do to lose, you know, get someone in there and put in this plant and mix it up. Because uh, what if we lose our power? Oh, then things might be better. Because everything that everyone's protesting is like make the world a better place stuff, like end the wars, <laughs> give people their rights back, give people their land back. And you don't want to do that. So you just keep making things worse and worse. You're a scared little bitch. You hear that? You CIA fucks. You're scared little bitches. What do you think of that? I just called you skew. You scared little <laughs> cowards. I'm at the NSA. That's why you work there because you're little scared cowards. Put your name and face out there. You're so oh, tough. I get oh, death threats. Oh, 
dude, we were, so this week uh, we were outside the Department of Justice. Uh, there was a protest for Julian Assange. It was also his 50th birthday and his father and brother were there protest, you know, they gave speeches outside the Department of Justice. And we would see these people walk by. I don't know if they all worked in the Department of Justice, but they worked in some of these government buildings, very well may have been Department of Justice employees. And they walk by with their neckties on and you could see them look over it like, what is this? And then like see the banner or something. And, and you'd see them like scrunch up their faces or laugh as they go by. And it's like, you are pathetic pieces of shit. You think you're so strong because you are with the fucking empire. It's like, ha ha, I'm with the empire. You guys are idiots. It's like you're fucking bootlickers and that makes you cool. You're like a cool kid because of that. Like, I know they're scared little followers. They're just like little frat guys that are, they're too scared to admit you're they're gay. That's what it is. Like, that's just, just, just say you're gay. Everyone's cool. You get to just admit you're gay. And that's and you're not, and you, you can't do it. So just, I don't know. You're scared. Oh, I want to work for the NSA. I'm scared. We're the Department of Justice. I'm working for freedom. No, you're working for evil and you're too much of a scared little punk to stand for something. You'd never put your neck on the line for anything. You're just going to do what you're told. That's why you're a scared little punk that you're paying to don't don't go outside of the the allowable little area that you yeah. that are safe. And actually, this uh, is the perfect segue to uh, to the next segment. So, segment segue. Government secrets. Graham unknowingly button. stumbles into an awesome segue. <laughs> <laughs> segue by accident. Government secrets. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> So this is about the, you know, the, the people that are saying we need more police and we need more money going to the police police and they need more weaponry and all that shit. Right. Speaking of being scared, speaking of the ruling elites being scared, the rich being scared. Um, and there's been this ongoing. I kind of wanted to break apart this lie, this, you know, government lie that's going on right now about this increase in crime. You know, oh my goodness, there's such a massive increase in crime. And it's because, and you're definitely hearing more of this on Fox News, but it is, you will you will see an article or a segment here or there on CNN, MSNBC. But, you know, the big perpetrators, the nightly perpetrators is like Fox News and some of these quote unquote conservative outlets. Uh, I don't know what the fuck the term conservative means anymore. If those motherfuckers are conservative, are, are they conserving the environment? Are they conserving the people? What are they conserving? But uh, so they are saying that there's this massive increase in crime. And why is it? It's because the people defunded the police, right? All these protests for defunding the police. And now the police have been defunded, and now it's just crime everywhere. <laughs> so, Black Agenda Report, and I and I actually covered some. Uh, it was from Greg Gutfeld, uh, piece of shit on Fox News. But Tucker Carlson's been doing this shit too, and a bunch of other outlets. I uh, have been saying exactly that, and Black Agenda Report, a uh, great outlet, did some coverage of this. And this is from an article there. Uh, so first of all, they they start off by going, by, by setting a picture. They go, there were almost 300 reported murders in New York City that year, almost one per day. There were 20,000 reported felony assaults, about 55 per day, more than 12,000 robberies, 35 per day. The year was 2018, and it was the safest year in New York City's recorded history. <laughs> in a city of over 8 million residents, crime, even in the safest times, will always be there, but also it will always be a headline of these media outlets. So they, even in years, now there have been an uptick in, uh, in shootings and murders, uh, but I'll get to that in a second. But even in years when there's not, when literally crime is going down, killings are going down, even in those years, you will actually see an increase in mainstream media coverage of murders, of crime, because 
Part of it is just because that's what fucking sells papers. That's what gets clicks. That's what gets eyeballs. Um, And part of it is because that justifies this endless and ridiculous uh, spending on on the largest police force in the world. Uh, if If you rank our police force in terms of militaries around the world, it's like five or six. It's the same. It's almost an identical budget as Russia's military. Yeah. Not their cops, their military. Yeah. Um, it also, there's also, there's also, this is so dumb. And of course, typical of the idiots, you know, the, 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 the Fox wing of the corporate media, they always like, they always, there's always this glaring omission. Like, gee, I wonder if people losing their jobs during a once in a hundred year pandemic had anything to do with the crime going up. Gee, I wonder when people are waiting in line for food, if they go, Hey, maybe we got to steal now. I wonder if the fact that, Oh, 3 million guns were purchased last year, new gun owners, like all these new guns we've had. LA has had 200 more shootings this time last. We had 400 some shootings this time last year and 600 some shootings this time. More people bought guns than less. There was lines, every gun shop in LA, there was a line out the door and there has been for the last goddamn year. And now just idiots or any, any more on there. And there was a shooting of a kid three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the guy just shot into the back seat of a car in a road rage thing on a freeway. Who was the shooter? Was he a criminal? Was he a gangbanger? Yeah, and, no. And Legal people, like say, people like to say, uh, you know, well, a gun's just a tool. And it's like, yeah, but if the tool's sitting there next to more people, you're going to have more people using the tool when they're being fucking idiots. Yes. The guy who did this, no criminal record, bought the gun legally, big second amendment guy and all of his social media and just decided he got mad and shot into the back of a car. No history of mental illness. He wasn't on drugs. He wasn't high, just got mad and had a gun there and shot into the back of a car and killed like a four-year-old kid. So what's the solution? What's the, oh, so the kid should have had a gun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Though. Was there a bumper sticker that said I'm with her? Yeah. Uh, then I could see it. I could. Right. Make a bit that of makes a sense. Effect. Yeah. It's, and so these idiots, these right wing morons are so stupid in their own dumb, fat headed way. And they're different than the stupidity of the vote any blue will do morons. Um, and they don't, they, again, fear sells and keep the corporate media is designed to keep us divided, distracted, and afraid. And scared, scared always helps. Sp- spend money and they never look at stuff like, well, what if defund the police? They always react with that stupid, like old man, like, oh, so we should just give the cops lollipops and squirt guns down, you know, like, no, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> well, we're saying- and, and just to get, just to get off on the, the gun tangent for one second, I am fine with gun ownership. I am fine with people owning whatever a pistol if they want to. Uh, but I think, I think it's the coward's weapon. And I, and I'm glad I'm losing viewers that are mad when I say that. So take your gun and go fuck yourself. But I'm sorry. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, no, no, it, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that too, but I, I don't, I'm not, well, I'm not someone who thinks there should be no guns, but here's the thing. If you talk to most Americans, almost everyone, like 99%, there's very few that say no guns. And there's almost none that say like fucking grenade launchers and nuclear bombs and whatever the fuck you want. Meaning the entire discussion is on a sliding scale. What size weapon are we going to allow in this fucking country? And people want to act like it's an all or nothing thing. Yeah, yeah, they take your hundred rounds that fire in one second gun. And then they're taking all the guns. If they, if you don't, if we can't get the clips that have a billion bullets in them, then they're taking all your guns. It's it's like almost everyone I know believes in some sort of middle ground and yet they were told to make this a black or white issue yet i've never met someone who thinks we should have grenade launchers or what if they which they're very close to doing what if they invent a laser that you could shoot that fucking goes through like three states and just kills everybody in your path are you cool with you just walking around with that like i am you're fine with that I would. I. I don't want guns. I want lasers. <laughs> I want lasers on sharks that you could carry. You carry the shark around, and you fire the laser. Shoot the laser out of it. Uh, you know, I think America's doomed, and it's it's 
America is going to divulge into some horrific sort of fractionalized territorial warlord beef and we're killing each other and it's going to be mayhem and Americans will never realize Americans are, and they're still going it's greatest country in the world. No, what nowhere else there's, if you watched another country do this, hundreds of shootings every day in, in each city, I mean, mass shootings every week, cops killing people every day, um, random shootings, uh, a capital that's overrun by people with guns that have Nazi paraphernalia. If you saw this in any other country, go that country's done. It's, it's out of its mind. I'm never going there. Like if you're living in another country, I wouldn't visit here. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't feel well, safe. I will, I will say this, Graham, that I've, I've talked to some, you know, friends in Australia or, or Britain, they literally think that we walk outside and we have to duck bullets. Like, cause if you look at the media coverage, that's what it sounds like. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it, it is. There, there are a lot of factors of America that are really fucking shitty right now, and it's leading the way. And these garbage politicians are leading us faster and faster down that path. But it's not like I go to the store and, <laughs> and I'm fucking ducking. No, but there's been a shooting. I mean, gun violence will affect everybody's daily life in one way or has in one way or another. If it if it hasn't, it will in America. That's just. There's, it's going to happen. I mean, there's, there's just no way with more fear, more poverty, more people losing their jobs and more gun sales. There's just no way. There's just no way it's not going to You know, all you need to protect from a gun is the flag, man. You just hold yeah. up that flag, USA. Yeah, there was a shooting in Santa Monica at the Santa Monica College, a young male, white male in his 20s. Uh, this is going to sound shocking. History of mental illness and easy access to guns. Went to Santa Monica College and shot it up, killed a bunch of people, and then he died. And then the next day in my yoga class, a half mile from the shooting after class, nobody said, I'm getting a gun. I'm, I'm protecting my, everyone prayed for world peace and said, namaste. But you know, that's, uh, that's how we dealt with it. Uh, no, but I don't live in fear. I, 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 if I, I hope I get killed by a gun nut so that I can wait for that guy and skull fuck him for hell and during for eternity in hell. <laughs> Sentences I didn't think I was going to hear on this episode. Yeah. I think I, I I'm doubling down on, on my disdain for gun owners. Now I'm, I'm done playing the live and I hope it pisses people off. So I always tell the gun owners, if you, if you don't like what I'm saying, you know, put the gun in your mouth and pull the trigger. That's what George Harrison said. If, if every gun owner killed themselves, then the world would be a better place. So it's a, it's a cowardly scared weapon. And, uh, yeah, go fuck off. Go fuck you. Fuck your hunting. Fuck your soldiers. Fuck your militia. Go fuck off. But anyway, um, as long as you include cops in that analysis, no cops too. They can go fuck themselves. Yeah, they can all go fuck them. Fuck them all. They can all go fuck themselves. <laughs> wow. Anyway, let's go. Let's finish this segment. Um, <laughs> oh man, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if you have it in you to finish this article. But um, so yes, they they continue talking about how crime is rising, and as you uh, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, this, this is a year when we're climbing out of a pandemic. We saw mass economic and social fallout. Uh, there's, you know, you know, so many people that are in more insecure in their lives than ever before in terms of where their food's coming from, how they're going to pay their rent. And so a lot of those things, all those things contribute to crime, to desperation. And so if you would have an actual genuine segment from Fox News or these other outlets, then they would discuss all of those things. But instead, they just, you know, they're bootlickers and they just want uh, Papa Police to protect, you know, the rich and their and their valuables. Yeah. So they just keep saying it's because we don't have enough police. We don't have, they're not have money pumped into them. Uh, the, this article talks about conservative tabloids. The, the Post and the New York Daily News uh, have for years tried to stir fear of a, and they're talking about New York, but it's happened in many cities, of a city overrun by crime. Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting has done coverage of this. Um, they were uh, they were apocalyptic in their predictions of the city when Stop and Frisk was stopped, which, of course, it was one of the most racist police procedures you could have. It was literally just New York Police Department riding around, grabbing any mostly black males, but black, Hispanic, some women, right. 
but any people of color grabbing them and just trying to find any reason in the world to arrest them. You know, whether they have a half a joint, whether they were loitering, whether they have an alcoholic beverage on them, just anything to, to put them in the system. Um, and so there's also been some criticism that there's been some reduction of cash bail which is the most fucking draconian bullshit. We are one of like two or three countries that even has cash bail. And and we have reduced it in some cities, in some states, which is the way it should fucking be. And the right-wing media is saying, oh, well, that's the reason there's an increase in crime because you're getting rid of cash bail. Uh, data, however, doesn't back, <laughs> data doesn't back the assertion that bail reform has led to crime increases. The Center for Court Innovation found no evidence to support the claim that bail reform was behind a spike in gun violence. <laughs> it's so, I can't, it, like this country is so insane. Like it's, I'm living in an insane asylum, living in this country, listen to people, we got rid of cash bail, that's why the crime went, like it's just, it's like, I don't, I don't even know how to, you can't even argue or debate with these people because they're just, they're just nuts. Have you ever tried to watch an episode of like Greg Gutfeld or Tucker Carlson or something? Oh, Gutfeld. Well, he's not funny. He thinks he's a comic for starters, so he's un he's unfunny. No, oh, he's painfully unfunny. But it's the the points he's making within his jokes. Just like I have points within my jokes. Yeah. Even if you wanted to ignore the not funny thing, it's like he's making utterly false points. Just utter bullshit. And yeah. it's the same with Tucker Carlson. It's it's. Like they're making up G Gutfeld's our, uh, segment that I made fun of a couple weeks ago on Redacted Tonight was like he was saying, oh, yeah, there's an uptick in crime because people were released. Prisoners were released during the pandemic and then they run. No, they run out and kill bodega owners. And it's like you have no evidence that that ever happened. Furthermore, the prisoners that were re released during the pandemic because of they were worried of the pandemic would sweep to the prisons, which it did. Those ones that were released were all nonviolent criminal. Like there was no one that was like, yeah, look, the worst criminals that killed 12 right. children, just put them out on the streets. Yeah. It's just that dumb, scared white. Um, the, the criminals are coming. The blacks are coming, move to the suburbs. It's just all that same stupid shit. I mean, I watch Fox news once in a blue moon just to see like, how crazy are they today? And, you know, CNN and MSNBC, you got to kind of dig through the bullshit a little more. And Fox just says the dumbest. I mean, they're they're what's their average age of that show? Like 78 or something like that. Like, who's watching that show? Is anyone watching that show that isn't an old, dumb white person? I mean, yeah, their, av their average age is over 66, I think. And then, but even yeah. for even for the other outlets, MSNBC, it's like Fox so, News. I mean, and uh CNN, it's over 50. Oh, they're all, I think they're all in the high 60s. I mean, I think they're like 67. See, and I think Fox is in the set. I mean, it's like, no, who's watching any of this crap? No one's watching this. Like people are getting there. So who cares what these idiots say? And hopefully they'll choke to death on their own vomit. Um, if hopefully they vomit for something. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love that analysis. I hope you choke on your own vomit. And then you think, Oh God, what if he doesn't vomit? Well, doesn't I also vomit? hope you vomit for a reason. <laughs> we, we gotta hope for the vomiting first. I mean, yeah. we can't put the cart car before the horse. Yeah, no, you gotta listen. If you're gonna hope someone chokes on their vomit, you gotta really analyze it and get to the root of of how you're gonna make that happen. <laughs> that's what. That's what. That would. That's what was in Machiavelli's The Prince. You know, if you're gonna tell someone to choke on their vomit, you have to then put forward an idea for how that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to have a vomit pre-plan. Right. I mean, that's that's the foundation of your choke on the vomit plan is you need to you need to first, how are they gonna vomit? Are they gonna get sick? Are they gonna have the flu? Are you gonna get are you gonna show up with an epicac? I anytime I can use I the mean, word epicac. My, my, <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that in a while. Uh the, the my go-to is to just describe Donald Trump's naked body in detail. So. <laughs> that is an epicac. There's no word like the word epicac. It almost just, makes you choke saying it. Is, yeah, uh, it is. The word epicac is an epicac. I mean, saying <laughs> the word makes me want to. Yeah, cool. it's like, oh, air. Just saying the word epicac. Oh, like I could, I well, can't finish the word. 
Well, the original version of it, people had trouble spelling. It was epic. <laughs> they didn't know how to spell that out, so they just put, well, let's just make it cack. It was, yeah, it, it was a lot of G's, and uh, and on the when they would put it on those signs where you put the letters up on like a fast food sign, they would run out of G's. So. Yeah, so epic hack. Um, <laughs> so real quick here. Uh, that should be one of our merch items, by the way, as a government secret <laughs> epic hack. So would it be like a vomit bucket we'd sell? Well, it would be a, it, you know, here's how you do This is how you make money, Lee. You get a bucket, the government secrets vomit bucket, and then a separate- <laughs> Or watching Fox News. <laughs> while watching Fox News. And then with a separate epic hack that makes you- Yeah. You, you can buy them separately. If maybe you already have your own bucket, but then we sell them as a vomit gift pack. <laughs> Vomit gift pack. Another series of words I didn't think I was going to hear in this episode. Now, last episode, sure, but this one, I, I had no idea. Well, this is what happens when you do episode 47 twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, Fox News claimed the crime surge was due to defunding the police, but... Uh, and they were talking specifically about New York City to some degree or city, other cities that were defund the police was a slogan. But here's the thing. Almost none of those cities have defunded the police. So it's <laughs> fucking horseshit on every level. New York did reshuffle some of their school police spending. However, the, the much hyped decrease in police budget, which, which was a billion dollars annually, was found by an independent budget watchdog to be only about a third of that. Any of the so-called cuts wouldn't figure into the policing puzzle anyway because increases in shootings began early last summer before the defunded budget, quote-unquote, would have even been felt in the police department. So it's all utter horseshit. Uh, the... Uh, let's see. The, and 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 also, there's the point that the New York City Police Department is by far and away the largest, most expensive, most you know, highest budgeted police force in the world, mm -hmm. in the fucking world. So for anybody who's like crime increased because of the police budget, you're like, this is the most expensive and largest police department in the world, even after that third of a billion dollars got reshuffled. Uh, so if anything, you could be like, why is there so much crime in New York City? Because there's so many fucking cops. Yeah. And and bullshit laws. Like stop all that stuff that just, that just targets mainly poor people of color. I mean, that's what it does. I mean, like if the cops were really, were really doing their jobs, they should be, I mean, there should be guys on Wall Street being arrested on a daily I mean, they, those, if you really want to stop the right. real crime in this country, go right. fucking put some of these hedge fund assholes in an orange jumpsuit and perp walk them down to police one station. You know what I'm saying? I'll I'm down with that plan, but no, you're just, and, and it's the same thing. And, and like, I've talked about this in Los Angeles, they, the LAPD gets 54% of the city's operating budget. We have a, the, the homeless problem keeps getting worse. It is so bad. And it is the most stark reality of have and have nots. Like downtown LA, you've got the Staples Center and all these fancy hotels and condos and then Skid Row, which is fucking hell on earth, man. I mean, people get shot, murdered, trafficked out of there. And the cops kind of just like, well, they just make it the purge. I mean, it's just like insane. And then, but gee, I wonder if we took some of the, if we, and the minute these guys here defund, they just, these conservatives slip out. What if we refunded, took some of that money? Because most cops will tell you they don't want to deal with the, every day they got to deal with the homeless and the craziness. What if we actually give, gave people, put them in homes? We've talked about the housing first program, put them in homes, got them drug treatment, mental illness treatment, you know, all that stuff, got them back on the streets. They had an 80% success rate in Finland. What yeah. if we took some of that rather than giving cops more up armored vehicles to go terrorize working class people. I mean, the day the cops put their boot on the neck of a billionaire and kill that billionaire, I'm then I'll, then I'll change my tune. Then I'll be like more on board with the cops, but I'm not seeing them do that. Like Bloomberg ties to Epstein. 
why is that guy still walking the streets? Oh, but your channel gets a copyright strike for just pointing out this factual stuff. So like yeah. they can go fuck off. They can suck yeah. it. Those Guthrie unfunny little pimp. I'd knock that cocksucker out with my vegetarian fists. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, and and uh, you know I I brought this up before, but like ninety five to ninety five to ninety nine percent of police don't need to exist. It should be other. All that they do should be done by other types of jobs. We should create, and we talked about this before. We should create mental health uh, squads that you could call and say there's somebody having mental health problems, and they come and they don't have guns, and they just fucking go and help the person. You should have. You could have police traffic people. If the speed limit is something that's very important to you, then you fucking have people pull people over and give them tickets for their speed limit. But those people don't have guns because that makes no sense. Why do you need a military presence to tell someone that their brake light is out? So, and you can go down the list. 99% of what police do is not, is, has nothing to do with like catching murderers and all right. that kind of stuff. So you could get rid of 99% of police and still have your people ready to deal with a terror attack or ready to deal with a maniac with a gun. You could still have some sort of people for that. But the reason this is not done, what I'm talking about, is because the true reason for our police department is they are the fist of the fascist state. They are the ones protecting the property and the status quo that is ruled by the rich that they are the ones making sure everyone continues to operate in a very confined space of what is allowable. And the moment you get outside of that, even to the level of trying to stop a pipeline or doing some sort of protest, then these people are used to crack down, crush, and arrest those groups. Yeah. And I have no problem continuing funding investigators detectives that do actual police work, finding out a murderer, breaking up a sex trafficking ring. That's fine. But like you say, the majority of the money is spent for, you know, in LA, they'd be like, this is a dispersed. This is an unlawful assembly. I, no, it's not. I, the constitution says that it's not, we have a right to protest. And yeah. then they just came in and just about every protest, everybody said the same thing. It was fine until the cop showed up when the cop showed up, it got violent. So it's like they, they, this five to 10% of police work that's actually like good police work investigators. A friend of mine, I had him on the show. He was a child crimes investigator. That's an important job. He caught sex traffickers and pedophiles. I mean, that was his job. And, 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 you know, hats off to him for doing that. And you need investigators for that kind of stuff. But we don't need people kicking homeless people out and night sticking protesters that just want to be treated with humanity. Or we don't need, I mean, like, spend the money to give people jobs and healthcare and education and all this stuff. And how many crimes, the crime rate would just go down just by doing that. And we've been talking about this for 40, 50 years and nobody wants to listen. So these right wing cocksuckers just deserve, I mean, I hope there's fucking rights then they want every, they, they love the second amendment. Okay. I'll go the other way. Then everybody get a gun, especially if you're a person of color, get a gun and defend yourself. <laughs> now let's see where they stand. Let's get a gun. Everyone get a gun. Every, oh, the black community, get a gun. Native American, absolutely get a gun. Let's get that. Let's arm all the all well, the people. That, that, that was when even Ronald Reagan started rethinking the open carry. He, yeah. he, he, they were all for open carry until the Black Panthers started open carrying. And then even Reagan was like, ah, never mind about that. Yeah. That's what I always say. Like, okay, you want your guns? You know what? You're right. Everybody should own a gun. Everybody. And there, and everyone gets to defend themselves. And they, if you come on their property, whether you're a cop or a soldier or whatever, yeah, that they got the right to defend themselves. Let's just play that game. Let's just go like that. Does everyone want to do that? Oh, they don't. Hmm. Okay. Let's get let's get Black Lives Matter heavily armed, and then go to a Capitol building, just like they did, just like the white nationalists have done, and the Trumpers, and the people who just wanted their masks. They wanted to get a haircut in Michigan. Let's let that happen. Why not? No? Oh, okay. Next time they they want to put a pipeline across your sovereign uh, Native American land, show up with a bunch of fucking guns and tanks and rocket launchers, and then we can just settle the the, the pipeline that way. No? I, I mean, I am glad we have the right to defend our haircuts with guns. It's, let's see. You don't have a right to a haircut. What do you have a right to? 
Yeah, I know. I mean, London was bombed every day by the Nazis during World War II for three day for three years, and this country couldn't go three months before it lost its shit because it couldn't get a haircut. So, yeah, America is really tough. <laughs> um, my the person who cuts my hair has been sick for the last week, so my hair is getting a little long. I'm going to go nuts. That's why I'm so angry today. I just haven't had a haircut, so I'm just going to lose. I can it. tell it's gay. I mean, what are you a fucking hippie? I am. I'm a godless hippie, um, and that's what's making me so angry. Um, so yeah, I guess I just flip flop. You you change my mind. Everybody get a gun and an automatic weapon and a rocket launcher. I should be able to have a rocket launcher and, and an armored vehicle. Throwing stuff. Yeah, and a shark that shoots lasers. <laughs> Throwing stars are kind of poetic because you can be like, "Well, you're, I just, I just killed you. Like you're bleeding out. You're gonna die." But it was with a star. I, I study martial arts and martial arts. I love martial art weapons because it's like you put your body at risk. Here's the thing. That's why I say the gun's a coward's weapon, because as a martial artist, I know if even, even the toughest guy, the most UFC champion, you know, title belt, 15 black belts, that guy knows that if I get into a physical confrontation, I'm still putting my body at risk. Like if I were to beat the snot out of Tucker and this Guthrie idiot, which I could, I could kick their asses while texting. Um, cause they're candy asses, but I still know that I potentially could like hurt myself. I could break my hand or right. something. You could break right. it. Right. You right. know that you're putting, you, yeah. you have to know that yeah. not with a gun. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. Oh, somebody's dead. I'm angry in traffic. There's a kid. I just did that. I just did this move. And then people are dead. I know it's like uh, I had a friend in college who was like a he was tiny he was like five four but he was a weightlifter so he had like biceps the size of his head but anyway he was about to get somehow he ended up in a, a about to be in a fight with like a six foot four guy and he said to him you know when the guy's getting ready to punch him and he said to him he's like look we can do this and you're gonna win but you're gonna lose a few teeth and the guy backed off yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's and that's half of fight. That's like I've learned that just in martial arts. Like guys that want to like bigger than me, and I just stand my ground and get in a defensive position and go, okay, you might win, but I'm gonna I'm gonna land something. I'm gonna land. I'm gonna <laughs> land a few. I'm gonna touch you with my fists and feet. That's gonna happen. So if you're ready for that, and that everybody goes, oh, but when you have a gun, you can just bang bang, and every people are dead. That's so. Everybody either train themselves like martial artists and we walk around like the samurai era of ancient feudal Japan, um, which I'm totally on board with that. I've studied the samurai sword and victory comes with the sword still in the scabbard. Because again, that they knew if I draw my sword, one or both of us could die. So they know that people weren't just getting into fights all the time or everybody's got guns and fucking rocket launchers and 60 cal machine guns, not a handgun. Everyone gets armed to the teeth. Everyone gets as much as the military and the cops get. <laughs> Pick one. Well, everyone gets their own drone with missiles. Armed yes. drone. Yes. Anyone can call in an airstrike. Speaking, speaking of coward weapon, how's that? You got pilots that are literally in bases in Tampa and, and Las <laughs> Vegas dropping bombs on bombs. people thousands of miles away that they see on a grainy video and and they that's how they decided to drop the bomb on them was in the grainy video they go well he's walking like someone we're pretty sure that he's walking like the guy we want to hit and uh and this was the stuff that daniel hale revealed to us and now he's being sentenced like next week for uh the uh, you know violating the espionage act mm -hmm. might spend 10 years or whatever in prison yeah. And people are like, well, what, I, what if I have, I want to, I'm, I like to hunt. Okay. Fair enough. Here, here about this one. You want to go get some deer, right? 12 point buck. You got to choke them out. You got to choke them out. You get, I will give you a knife. They got 12 sharp. I'll give you, you get a knife. You win, you get venison that night. You lose, <laughs> score one from mother nature. How about that one? No. I like it. I like it. So if I run for Congress, that's going to be my platform. Everybody gets a uh, rocket launcher. Everyone gets a rocket launcher and like the, the deer piss you can put on yourself. So you smell like them. You just, you get, you get the piss of whoever your enemy is. So 
If you dislike your neighbor, you get his piss to sprinkle on yourself. <laughs> a rocket launcher and deer piss in every pot. That's going to be my <laughs> that's going to be my campaign slogan. <laughs> um, I think we did it, man. I think we did. <laughs> I don't know what we did, but I think we did it. This is the best podcast on the internet. Episode 47 lives you know on what? forever. This, this is what happens to Graham when you don't give him enough slides to occupy himself with. You got to give him the slides uh, or, you know, without, without visual slides, it just all breaks down. I can't handle this. Yeah. yeah. Without visual slides, it breaks down. Um, well, uh, we've got Ron Placone and I have tour dates. If you go to GrahamMelwood.com and, uh, one of the dates we're going to do is in New York City, October 11th. The 13th, we're in D.C. And the 12th, Lee Camp and I are trying to find a venue to do government secrets in New York City. That's what we're working yeah, if on. If anyone right knows there. a good, I mean, we, we found one we might use in Manhattan. But if anybody knows a good Brooklyn venue, uh, let us know. That would be cool. You can yeah. email me, Lee Camp Mail, M-A-I-L, at gmail.com. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And also there's a weekend in LA where Ron and I, Ron's got to go to like a wedding or something. I think it's the weekend of the 17th. If I can get a venue in LA, would you want to come out and do a government secrets in Los Angeles? Maybe, maybe. Oh, <laughs> Gov seeks live in LA. How about it? Uh, uh, it's a possibility. It's definitely a possibility. Uh, there is a, there's like a week I'm gone in August though. So. This is again, we're getting to that point where it could be a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what kind of laundry detergent do you use? I mean, do you use like what kind of what's your best? <laughs> do you use the sheets? The, like the or you just use fabric yeah, softener? I, listen, I've been having a I've been having a dryer sheet issue that by the way, government secret bonus government secret. Bonus government secret dryer sheet cover up. <laughs> For all of you vegans out there, on most dryer sheets, there is animal fat. So you're covering your clothing with animal fat. I get the <laughs> second generation ones that are like compostable or whatever, but that is horrifying. Why would they do that? Well, I, I don't know about seventh generation. The the yeah, but the the the, the ones most people use, like you know, what what's uh, Snuggles? What's his fucking name? The little bear. <laughs> Uh, Snuggles the bear. Yeah, Snuggles, uh, you know that kind of shit. Like most of the main name brand ones, not probably not the like seventh generation. I, I like how you said. What's the name of the snuggle? His name is Snuggles. It's not like his name is like Mike Snuggles or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Snuggles. Uh, 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 Danny, Danny, Danny Snuggles. <laughs> Uh, no, Danny's yeah. his brother. That guy. Danny. That guy. Uh, Bartholomew uh, Snugglepuss. Is that his name? Uh, him. Bart. I'm going to call him What's Bart. Jimmy Snuggles? What's his name? Jimmy. <laughs> Hold on. You're telling me after all this time that his last name's not Snuggles? I think he's like Cher. He just has one name. Snuggles. <laughs> <laughs> or Prince, Shit, man. All this time, oh, is my face red? All this time, I've been, I've been calling him Mister or or uh, Mister Snuggles Esquire or Your Lordship Snuggles. I thought Cap Captain, Snuggles. Captain Snuggles, Captain, Captain. I thought it was his last name. God damn it! Oh. And he never corrected me. <laughs> What the fuck? Oh man, that's so cool! You get to hang out with the uh, Danny Snuggles. Um, <laughs> um, so did we? People have been asking about how to donate. Did we set that up? Of course not. There's no <laughs> way. <right? laughs> of, of course not. No, we fucking didn't. Jesus, <laughs> why would you even say that? Lee, both of us barely read anything leading into this episode today. Like, come on. You really, you really. <laughs> but we have created Government Secrets Cock Rings at Cafe Press. So there is, for some odd reason, we got our, we got our shit together for that. You can get the cock rings now. 
It benefits the show. And it's coming, and we are coming out with hashtag pew pew strap on dildos. That's coming for sure. Pew pew. <laughs> Covered secrets, cock rings. <laughs> um, and we are um, going to have uh, autographed photos of uh, of Mitch Snuggles uh, that he's going to show up at our show. He might do a drop in. He might open up for us on these road shows, <laughs> Snuggles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Lee and I talk about we want to have a, a donate button and. Lee talked to me. We're going to do that library thing or whatever that I keep. I don't know the name of what's it called. Le Pay. <laughs> Grant, Grant, Grant's been working for three weeks on nailing down the name of the website. If he can figure that out, we're going to do that Lisbon Pay thing coming up. And uh, so it doesn't take long to set up. I, I understood, but there's no way. <laughs> But the problem was, whenever Graham would think of it, he got sleepy. So I got so sleepy, or I'd get some crazy email from someone I'd have to block or something like that. Um, so we will have a way for you to donate at some point in the future. <laughs> and we appreciate, honestly, in all seriousness, we appreciate that many of you are like, hey, how do we support the show? We really want to support it, and we want to give you a way to support it. Um, but we're going to set up this Libya pay thing. So we'll get that squared up. And, um, and then, but hopefully we might have some, yeah, if we can get these tour dates, we will, we'll announce those. And then you can buy, you can get an autographed cock ring. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I will not autograph if it's on you at the time. <laughs> one of my rules. It's one of my rules. I will if it's part of your fraternity hazing. Like I'll help support you in that decision if that's <laughs> what you're doing. Because I don't want to judge your lifestyle choices. Um, someone's asking if the cock rings have clitoral stimulation on them. Let's not get into the fine points of the merch. We're just gonna let's get this website set up first. We don't give away all our secrets. Just let me get the website set up first. Just let me get the, the lemonade.com set up, and we'll get that. <laughs> We'll get that figured up. I think Beyonce already has that. <laughs> All um, right. So, yeah, Lee, where can people follow you? On the, this is a bonus-sized episode. We've talked about it. Really, it really is because we can't get our shit together. Uh, I'm at <laughs> LeeCamp.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, the new Redacted Tonight comes out tonight. So that'll be up at LeeCamp.com soon. Also, YouTube.com slash Moment of Clarity. On Twitter, I'm at LeeCamp. And uh, yeah, that's where you can follow me. Sweet, sweet. Go to grandmelwood.com for the tour dates, the political vigilante merchandise, and uh, you know, support my show. I'm in the sixth month of being demonetized. So thanks to YouTube, um, which I wonder if that has anything to do with why I'm so angry. Uh, so go to rockfin.com um, and support uh, what I do. Thank you so much. And we'll next week we will have episode 47C. We're just going to keep, giving, we're going to sign yeah. letters to them. Yeah. Um, and like, and share, and, and give us a positive reviews. So how, however you consume the show, what, whatever platform, Spotify, if you're just listening to the audio, Spotify, iTunes, give it a good review, five stars, whatever, like it, share it, subscribe it, do all that stuff, because all that stuff helps. And the deep state doesn't want us. That's why Lee's gotten a copyright strike. I've gotten one. And uh, that's, that's what's going on. So. Thanks, man. I will see you next week. You got it, buddy. Have a great weekend. Let me know how, what happens with the um, animal-based laundry sheets. <laughs> will do. So are you just throwing like a pork chop into your dryer? Is that what you're doing? Basically? Yeah, I've, I've replaced it with pork chops. Yeah, I, I, I have. Uh, no, I listen. As a vegetarian, I was a little pissed to find out I was covering all my clothes with animal fat. <laughs> God, that's disgusting. What a bunch of savages. Like the people I know, if, are like if you've got to do something fucking gross like that, at least say on the box, hey, this is plastered in animals we've killed. <laughs> like, what a bunch of psycho murderers. That's like Jeffrey Dahmer's making fucking dryer sheets. Like, what is uh, anyway? I mean, the shit we do to animals is unbelievable. Like, you I can guarantee you at no point were two sheep like chatting with each other and they were like, hey, after we die, you don't think they like turn part of us into something they put on their dicks, right? That's not, that's not a thing, right? But no, sure enough, people do.
No, they do say that. I watched Animal Farm <laughs> when I was when I was in high school. They showed that to us or whatever. Yeah, there was an extended scene about that. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. All right, dude. Yeah. Well, have a good weekend and we'll talk soon. Later, Matt. Later. Government secrets. Episode 47 with Lee Camp. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. Have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.